Hello, hello, hola, hola, amigos, amigas. Welcome to this day dedicated to the ancient Incan cuisine. And in today's Hago Food Academy, I've been honored to represent my country, Peru. And I wanted to also take you back in time to an era that now is long gone, the Incas period, the time of the Incas. We are going to have a lunch as the one the Incas had before the coming of the conquistadors. So this is not just going to be another cooking show here on my channel in Hago. It is going to be a historic occasion because we're going to discover how the Incas used to have lunch, how the Incas used to have their dinners. We are going to go back in time to learn about the cooking techniques of the ancient Peruvians, and we're going to cook together a dish that I'm sure you're going to be surprised uh, that we Peruvians enjoy still nowadays. We're going to eat puy or guinea pig. So I hope that you enjoy very much this event. It is a pleasure to have you today. Thanks a lot for joining. First of all, I would like to thank Alex for the uh, invitation to this Hago Academy. Alex uh, from Australia, he's been such a sweetheart for considering me as, as one of the persons that will show our cuisine um, in this fantastic uh, event, international event. So, uh, and also, and most importantly, thank to you all that are joining today this event. If you are new to my cooking show, if you are new to my channel here on Hago, my name is Vanessa Vasquez. I am your Lima City tour guide. I have the pleasure of showing you in every occasion I am live here on Hago, different parts of my beloved city, Lima, the capital of Peru. Also, I do cooking shows here. Uh, I, I do very often um, events related with Peruvian cuisine and gastronomy. And also I do historic lectures. I am a tour guide here in Lima. So, um, well, these events give me the opportunity of sharing with you lots of different you know, aspects and, and, and sides of, of my country, of being in Peru, of being Peruvian, and being from Lima, my city, the capital of Peru. So I am so happy that there are so many people here today joining my event. Um, please feel free of commenting on, on chatting. Um, also, uh, I'm not very used to having so many people. Uh, uh, and I'm very happy for that. So if you have a question, uh, we're going to have a time for questions. I will be calling uh, moments for questions. So in that way, I will be approaching to the camera and read the questions in that moment while we are cooking. So for now, you can feel free of either commenting uh, or maybe disconnecting the chat if you prefer to do that. Uh, and then in a moment, I will call to questions also. So are you ready for this Hago Food Academy of today? <laughs> yes, yes. Muy bien, I see lots of thumbs up. Gracias, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you for being there and for your positivism. So well, let me first share with you what we're going to be doing today. By the way, lots of noise around. This is, you know, Limanians, Peruvians, we are very noisy. <laughs> so there's something happening there outside. I don't know what. <laughs> so we're going now to talk about our dish of today. So let me tell you, and of course, you know, as you can tell this uh, event today, it's, it's really not a vegetarian event. This is going to be an event about indigenous cuisine of Peru. And you're going to learn today about the different products uh, that 
Peruvian, some of the products Peruvians domesticated in our history that you are also use a lot in your in your cooking. For example, my friend Stefan, yesterday was the Hago special of Stefan. Um, he talked about potatoes and how important potatoes are for, for the people of his country. So we're going to talk about how Peruvian people used to eat in the ancient times. And that's why I will be now bringing first a picture to the pers the person, the uh, product that is going to be part of our event today. So you know guinea pig, right? So remember that in Peru and in different parts of the uh, Andean, Central Andean section of South America, there were different animals, different fauna than the one of Europe. Well, before the coming of the conquistadors, we had different indigenous animals that we consume or that were the ones that gave us protein, of course, or the energy. And most of the people of the territory of Peru uh, use fish uh, as not just in the coast, also in the Andes and even in, in the jungle, fish from the ocean. Also, uh, fish was a very important product. But another product that Peruvians used, ancient Peruvians used back then, that consumed a lot was guinea pig. But the ancient guinea pigs actually didn't look like the one you just saw there. They look more like this one here. Okay, so this is the cuy that was domesticated, that was domesticated by the ancient Peruvians. Okay, so that one is a wild guinea pig. It's a wild guinea pig. Mm -hmm. There you can see also its um, scientific name, right? Um, and this a uh, little animal, which is still is running wild in the Andes, was the one that later was domesticated. Uh, but for what reason was domesticated? For consumption, for eating. So probably you know that in Peru, we eat uh, also alpaca, right? Nowadays, we eat alpaca, and in some parts of the country, we eat llama. Uh, in an, uh, Bolivia, also people eat llama. But in the ancient times, in the pre-Hispanic times, alpacas and llamas were not uh, raised to be used as meat to, to eat. Uh, they were raised for the wool. They were raised for the wool. So it was really not a, a type of animal that people of the ancient Peru will be eating all the time. They prefer uh, to use uh, the alpacas and in particular the llamas uh, for their wool and also as load animals, okay? So, well, now we are going to continue with the part that is probably you are all waiting for. So I will move now the camera back downwards. And we are going to start with this cooking show that you all know. Uh, it's going to be about guinea pig. Okay, so let me just move the camera down. And we are going to do something very special today because we are going to cook for the Inca. Okay, so we are going to do a preparation thinking that the Inca is going to have it. We've been invited to the table of the Inca. So therefore, we need our guinea pig to be done perfectly. I will show you also the cooking techniques uh, of the pre-Hispanic times, okay? So what type of products were used in the times of the Incas, what type of chilies, what type of condiments. We are going to try to recreate every step 
of a classical dinner of the Inca times. Okay? So, muy bien. We have our guinea pig. As you can see, guinea pigs, which were domesticated long time ago, one of the latest investigations says that guinea pigs were, um, let's say, domesticated about 7,000 years ago for the consumption of people. Uh, it's like chicken, like duck, uh, like rabbit, like be uh, like the beef, right? Like the, um, let's say, pork, you know? So all of these different animals that in Europe were consumed for a long time, also in Peru, we don't, didn't have so many. So that's why we use animals which were local, which were endemic. But one guinea pig is not really big enough for many people. So that's why in the ancient times, you know, guinea pigs were consumed, uh, many also in the houses, many. Uh, and one person usually ate one guinea pig, okay? So we have to have our guinea pig very clean. Uh, by the way, I have eviscerated our guinea pig. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm going also to use sharpener also. And we're going just to clean as much as we can our guinea pig. Okay, so for example, we can also take a little bit of what we have here extra. I have also cleaned all my guinea pig and we are going to boil the guinea pig first. So what we need is water. We're going to have water in a pan. And we are going to add flavor uh, to our uh, boiling water. So just give me a second over here. So we have water that is going to be boiling. Just give me a second. We're going to process also uh, with a, another important part. We're going just to use a little bit of onion. Oh, so we have just a little part of onion for our water. I will add this leaf is known as salvia, salvia eh, internationally, but in Peru, we know it as huacatay. Oh, so salvia is a aromatic uh, plant that we are going to be using for the boiling process. Okay? So, sorry. Uh, we have to put the heat up. We're going also to add, this is garlic paste. So we're going to be adding garlic paste to our water. Huh? We're going to add two spoons of garlic paste to our water. And we are going to add oregano, okay? So as you can see, some of the products that I am using in this moment are endemic products of Peru, and some of them are not. When the Spanish came, they introduced uh, new products, they introduced new species, they introduced new flavors, but also they love the ones that we had here in Peru, like the one, for example, of the chilies. We're going to have the chance of using chili today. Uh, chilies in different colors. We have the red chili, we have the yellow chili. Uh, potatoes. Yesterday, my friend Stefan, uh, um, in his event, uh, in his Hegel Food Academy, he also used potato. Also, I feel so happy, you know, that 
the world has embraced this tuber. And by the way, amigos, I will show you in a moment how the potatoes originally used to be before they were uh, domesticated. So I have a picture about that. So I want to just give a, a little, you know, like a wash to our guinea pig. We are going, we have eviscerated our guinea pig, by the way. And we are going to put it all in the pot. Okay, so we are going to previously boil it. Okay, so we're going to boil our guinea pig. And when it boils, when it starts boiling, we are going to uh, leave it for just a couple of minutes, not more. And the reason is because the guinea pig uh, has a very, very delicate skin, has delicate skin. Uh, it's, it's not really much skin or meat in it. So we need it not to dissolve, it's still to be, you know, like a soft, but we're going to fry it. It's going to be deep fry. Uh, no, my dear Marlene, in Peru, the tradition is not removing the head when you are going to boil it. Why? So let me just move the camera a little bit. Of course. Why? The reason is very, sorry. The reason is simple. So what we are doing at this part also, this is the boiling process of the guinea pig, which is going to be fast with some herbs. Uh, we are also going to create a broth, okay? So the broth uh, that we're going to produce here is going to help us to do the sauce that we're going to be uh, using in the preparation of this dish. So um, before we go to the moment of the questions, which I'm sure many of you is expecting, I would like to show you this picture over here that I found. You can see in the image I just shared with you, it says domesticación de la papa, or domestication of the potatoes in Peru. Uh, you can see, first of all, that the potatoes were domesticated around 7,000 years ago in my country. And the potatoes, the tiny potatoes you see in the image there, please do a click in the picture I just shared. They are so tiny that they are tinier than a coin, right? So they are tinier than a coin. So that is the origin of the potatoes. You know, that tiny, tiny one hmm, versus this one here, which is almost half my head. <laughs> so, and this is not one of the biggest, really, I, I see in the markets, right? But just to give you an idea of how, um, how long has been the process of domestication of the potatoes in my country, in Peru. And in part, the reason is because, number one, the diversity of the landscapes of Peru, the elevations, you know, some parts are more humid in my country, some parts are drier, higher, lower, more rain, less rain, all of that help the ancient Peruvians to tailor the potato in the way they want it uh, to, to have them. Uh, and creating, in this moment, we have about 4,000 kinds of potatoes in, in Peru, 4,000 varieties of potatoes, tubers in my country, okay? So now it is time for a round of questions. Please begin only with questions so I can also address them right now. Uh, you can start um, sharing your, your questions for some minutes. So how often would the average person eat guinea pig uh, or is just for a special occasion? Wonderful question, Lynn. And to be honest, in Peru, uh, we have different realities, no? In the Andes is where people eat the most guinea pig. I eat guinea pig because my family is from the Andes, no? But also in the coast, there are many people who come from families of the Andes. 
So in my family, we eat guinea pig in birthdays and especially in birthdays. And the person who is celebrating the birthday is the one that receives the big guinea pig usually oh, because guinea pigs are quite expensive. Uh, nowadays in these days so uh, in other occasions you know we just uh, chop the guinea pig in pieces right and then uh well we 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 switch you know, we, we share sorry uh -huh. wonder what salvia would be in the u.s so uh, the name of this plant is wakatai uh, for sure it is not one of the easy plants to find out of peru um, but you can replace salvia or wakatai with could be um, a, let's say oregano for example will also the idea is enhance the flavor uh, what is salvia similar to mm, uh, not sure uh, alice to be honest it is one of the endemic plants we have in peru i found the translation to salvia uh-huh uh, parsley so yes it could be it could be a, a good idea as well. Uh, I have oregano today, so I added oregano, oregano. Wakatai mm -hmm. uh, maple. Wakatai is H, I'm trying to think in, in Spanish and English, H-U-A-C-A-T-A-Y. Wakatai <laughs> is the taste like what a regular pig? Oh, Karen, no, I will say that probably is more inclined to rabbit or bunny. Uh, rabbit. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you keep the head? Oh, Tony, remember that we are doing not just a boiling process of the guinea pig, we are also doing a broth. We are doing a broth. Gracias, Marek. So um, the idea of the, the broth is going to be also to use this liquid in the next part of the uh, event, which we're going to begin in a little while. So thanks a lot for your questions. By, but why is their head needed to be broth? Ah, yes, uh, because there is not really much of the guinea pig. You know, the guinea pig has less bones. Uh, maybe you know this tiny tiny bones right uh, and so tiny that sometimes they look like hairs we are going later to deep fry it uh, so um, you're going to see in a moment that there is not really much uh, of the bones to be uh, you know like worried about like you're going to you need to debone it of course you can of course you can but you know we can also deep fry it with no complications and people will not find you know the bones to be uncomfortable right uh, so that's why and also by the way is the secret of grandma my grandmother said that the head of the guinea pig is what concentrated most of the flavor for the broth that we are going to do in a moment okay so this is a little secret mm -hmm. muy bien amigos so we are going just to wrap up a little bit the questions part you can keep also conversing if you wish or uh, enjoying yourselves and we are, i promise we're going to have another question section look that we are starting to see boiling here can you see it we have the boiling beginning uh, and we are going to count more or less two minutes and then we are going to uh, remove our guinea pig from the water because we don't want it to be dissolved. I have my clock over here. And we're going to let it to cool down a little bit, okay? We're going to let it cool down in a moment. Mm -hmm. So, how high did you put the flame? It's high, Tony. It's high. It's high flame in this moment because we wanted, you know, all the 
to boil, you know, like fast. And then we are going just to turn down the, uh, the, the fire. Okay, so we have chopped brunoise, our onion. And let me also tell you a little more of the ingredients we're going to be using. This is another of the chilies we're going to use. Uh, it is the uh, panca chili. Panca chili is basically a red chili. It's a dry red chili, which is very potent in terms of flavor. Mm? It's really like mm, delicious. It is the base of most of the Peruvian dishes. Mm. Uh, we are not going to use this one today, but I just wanted to show you other alternative of chili, which is this one here. This is the yellow chili, also used in many Peruvian recipes. Also, uh, it is quite hot. By the way, both of them are hot when... Uh, when they are not boiled. I just share a picture of the chili, also known as ají, muy bien, maple, muy bien. I hope you had a beautiful birthday, maple, yesterday. <laughs> so, um, so when you boil the chili, you take off the heat. This, that's a good secret. If you want to take off the heat of the chili, boil it. Boil it for a couple of minutes and it will, you know, go down. Okay. So now I will just lower a little bit of the heat here. Oh, and it smells very good. It smells all the onion. We're going also to use our tweezers. Okay. And we have very well boiled our guinea pig. Okay, fantastic. So let me take, look at this beautiful plate I have here for our guinea pig. Thank you so much for being today here in our show. Thanks for, you know, being so open-minded in, in, in learning about a different type of cuisine. And this is ancestral cuisine. I remember also seeing the show of uh, Sayuri uh, uh, and her friend in, in Bahia, in Brazil. Uh, and she also mentioned at, with her friend that what they do is they cook ancestral food. Gracias, Doreen. And thanks to all the people who are supporting this event with a tip. Look at the broth, right? So we can see a broth that is very consistent. Remember, my grandmother used to say that the head of the guinea pig is what helps the broth to be this thick, okay? It smells also the oregano. It smells the salvia. It smells also mm, the garlic and, of course, the onions, okay? So we're going to remove this and we're going to put in a moment a pan here, but we're going to turn it off. We're going to save the broth. Remember, this is for later. So the, the chilies uh, in Peru uh, were also one of the pearls that were consumed the most, but as well, this other product here. So what is this? This is peanut. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks for your support. Mm. This is grounded peanut. Mm. So peanuts also were consumed in Peru since ancient times. We know it because of the potteries. Also, like before, I shared with you some uh, images. Uh, one of them was of an ancient pottery uh, in which the chilies were represented. Gracias, Corinne. Uh, so we are going to enhance the flavor, gracias Juan and Beth, with this uh, wonderful peanut, mani. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going now to uh, bring 
Oh, we have lots of different pots here. Remember that today we are cooking for the Inca. So this is uh, a very special occasion because we hope the Inca will enjoy our dish. But because we are from modern times, and we are from a time in which, you know, we have so many, oh, thanks for your support, amigos, Adi and Sue, Andrea, Crisa, Crisa, gracias. We are in a time in which we are, you know, in a, uh, in a world that is so connected. We are including ingredients that the Inca uh, didn't use. Uh, one of those ingredients that now we love a lot is garlic, and another one is onions, right? Garlic and onions, very important. Garlic, onions, and chili is the Peruvian trinity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to dry a little bit the pan. Just drying the pan uh, here. And in a moment, we are going to to cut the guinea pig, okay? So we're going to cut the guinea pig. Mm -hmm. So um, in a moment also, we are going to begin with a round of questions again. I hope you are having a fun time, amigos. You're enjoying. You must have already some questions there ready. Uh, um, I think before, I would like to share with you uh, another image let me just so we can have or use this as a way of, or a starting of a conversation i think this is the one uh-huh oh exactly the schedule uh, of uh, of the eating eating schedule in pre-hispanic times so how people of peru how often people of ancient peru used to eat um, well, the historians mentioned that, and this is thanks to the, the documents discovered uh, from, from trips of the Spanish. The, the Spanish used to travel to different locations during the conquest process of this territory. In the year 1532 is when they, for the first time, came to, to, to explore the, the deeper territories of Peru. And they mentioned in their chronicles that they saw the indigenous eating. Some of the chronists said two times a day. One around, let's say, 8 to 9 a.m. And another one two hours before sunset. Okay. And the other one, uh, the other, uh, let's say, uh, version, let's say, was that three times a day between eight and nine at noon and two hours before sunset. Mm -hmm. So now we are going to begin with the second round of questions. I hope you are liking this idea. I know... Um, I also like to chat when I am on the tours. And please now, uh, if you wish to participate, asking the questions. We're going to begin also frying the onion. This was more or less one onion. And we are going to go for a round of questions while the onion is frying. Okay, amigos, let's begin. What did you add before the onion? Oh, yes, Alice, oil. Very important, oil. And that's also something the Spanish introduced in this territory. Eh? The Incas didn't cook using oil because we didn't have any. Huh? The Incas boiled. The Incas boiled the food. Or the Incas roasted. Roasted. Mm -hmm. but they didn't fry it, okay? So also they use, oh, they marinated, they marinated, okay? 
So I have another question over there. Okay, second question. Stephanie, do you use olive oil? No, my dear. I use regular oil, uh, regular oil, which resists more than the olive oil, the temperatures. Oh, it's almost there. Look how fast it's getting white. Would it be right in saying there is not much fat in the guinea pig? Yes, of course, there is not much fat. Actually, uh, um, Casey, a guinea pig is recommended for people who are dealing with high cholesterol in Peru. Uh, also, many things have been attributed, uh, many positive things attributed to a guinea pig, uh -huh, as even being good against cancer. You know, like for fighting cancer. Oh, here's my spoon. I'm going to lower. We're lowering a little bit the onion. We use red onion. And look how fast the onion is turning uh, white. And we are now putting two spoons of red chili paste. Okay. We continue with the questions. Uh, Evelyn, how do you turn up the heat in, chi uh, in Chile? If boiling it turns the heat down. Ah, excellent, uh, Evelyn. You know how when you expose the chili, you sun dry it. When you dry it at the sun, it comes out, it intensifies the heat. Uh huh. So usually the dry chilies are very, very hot. Or at least that's how my grandmother used to do for intensifying the flavor. How do you turn up the heat? Oh, sorry, even I'm reading two times. Manteca, Daniel, uh, in Peru we don't use much manteca now, um, probably because it's, it's, well, I mean, in Peru, no, in the cities, in the big cities, because in the Andes people still use the, manteca is the fat of the animal usually, uh, which could be an alternative. But we prefer also for the, you know, like that. Calories and all of that. The oil, or if not, if possible, less oil. But you know, well, when is possible? Did the Incas only cook with herbs? Did I understood they have onions and garlic? Oh no, no, Corinne. The Incas didn't use garlic and onion because garlic and onion came with the Spanish, uh, with the conquistadors. Maybe you remember that the conquistadors introduced. Uh, let's say some products too, not just garlic and onions. We're going to put some condiment now, pepper, also a product that the Spanish introduced. Cumin, a little bit more, more or less like half a spoon of both. Mm -hmm. The heat is very low, it's low heat. We don't want to burn this, this wonderful sauce we are making okay then we're going to fry our guinea pig mm -hmm. your kitchen is so pretty oh gracias margaret do you mind the sign before your sign oh oh yes the sign yes 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 sure it, it says margaret uh and in a moment i will move the camera you know I'm, I'm using a tripod that's why it's going down but in a moment i move it up it says acá se come sin culpa which means in English, here we eat without guilt. <laughs> because we you know, like, we don't count the calories in my house. Uh, is the, uh, oh, sorry, is the guinea pig completely cooked or will be continued to cook? Oh, it, maple is not completely cooked. It's not completely cooked. The dry pepper flakes. Yes, Sue, do you mean about the, the hot ones, right? So, eh. Uh, we are going to cook the guinea pig maple in a moment more because we are going to fry it, okay? So we're going now to add a little bit of oregano and we're going to add also our peanut, okay? But don't you think it's a little bit dry? Of course it's dry. So there are two liquidy things we're going to be adding now. Number one is our 
broth. I'm going to move just a little bit our camera in this direction, a little bit more to give you a better angle. So we're going to be adding, look at our broth. Look at our broth, you know, very, very consistent. Mmm, mmm. It is not salty, of course, because I haven't had any salt, but it has very, very good flavor. Just a little bit more of this. And we're going to be adding more and more of the broth in a moment because probably it's going to, uh, let's say, you know, um, dry, you know, a little bit as it is cooking. We have added about three spoons of peanut, but we're going to be adding a bit more. It shouldn't be this dry. We're going to add more. Approximately one cup we have added of broth of our guinea pig. Mm -hmm. So we have to just smash a little bit the, oh, sorry, it's coming everything out. Smash our uh, peanut. Huh? So, and there's one more liquid. We're going to leave it there to dry more because there's one liquid I want to share with you, okay? So in a moment, we are going to... Uh, to uh, talk about corn. Uh, so if you have questions, amigo, by the way, sorry if I am not checking on, on the comments now. We are having about every five, maybe 10 minutes, a time for questions. So all the questions come boom, 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 at that time and I can address them and then you can also chat. Hola, hola, Stefan. Hola, thanks for coming. Hola, amigo. Look, look at this. We have a Peruvian potato here. <laughs> I saved this one especially for you. Okay, this is a mega potato. Look, it's as big as my head, almost. <laughs> We're talking about the, the ancient potatoes uh, and how originally the potatoes used to be when, uh, when the, before the domestication of the potatoes about yeah, more or less, it's, it's estimated about 7,000 years ago when the Peruvians domesticated the potatoes. Also for my friends that are just coming. Hola, Leslie. Hola, querida. So, would you like to see how were the potatoes before domestication? I share already this special picture with my friends, but I would like to share them again. Hola, Leslie. So can you see in the picture the tiny, tiny, they look like little balls, like little marbles. You know, like they were like this. Those were the potatoes originally, that tiny, you know, and now we have this huge one. But there is another product and you are seeing me shaking, shaking, shaking this, but probably you say like, what Vanessa is shaking? I'm sorry, this one is not. Okay, so this drink you see here uh, is made from corn. Can you see the pictures? Up there so who knows like a hundred points for the person who tells me what this product is about hola marilyn querida <laughs> yes Stefan. you know and there, there is something very funny in in some parts of the andes still nowadays when women want to get married they have to prove they are good why they're going to be good housewives Peeling a potato that is very big and very complicated, like has lots of, you know, little balls and, and they have to peel it, but just in one peeling, like, and, and being perfect. And if they do it, they can get married. <laughs> so this is, has anyone said what pro is this one? A he, no, it's not a he, maple. This one is chicha mora. Sorry, chicha de jora. Chicha is a drink made from corn. That drink you see here was made from corn. 
and also, let me open it, is the beer of the Andes. We're going to add a little bit of beer of the Andes here. Cheers, amigos, cheers. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Gracias, Stephanie. Oh, it's a very strong, very strong, like, it's a, like a beer. It's not so sweet. Some of the chichas are made to be very sweet. This one is more for cooking, okay? So, uh, also, <laughs> let me show you this other picture. How originally the corn, because this one is made from corn, is fermented corn, sprouted corn, right? How corn used to be like, you know, by thousands of years ago, uh, like a little stick. <laughs> so, well, things of course have changed. We're going to add our delicious chicha de jora. Uh, so we want our Inca to love this sauce. And in a moment, we are going also to add a little bit of salt. Okay. So salt was important in ancient Peru for many reasons. Of course, for the flavor, right? But also for a preservation of products. Remember that people of the Andes used to consume fish from the coast. The only way how they were able to do it was salting the, uh, the fish. Okay. So we're going to check how much salt we need. Also the salt mines were very important. Let's see how it goes. Mm, we need more salt and we need a little bit more time for cooking. Okay. I'm going to leave it here for a little while. Okay, so now is the part that my friends that probably like too much the guinea pigs will not like to see much <laughs> but if you are you know like a, an entrepreneur or like an adventurous person that you wanna you know see how the real peruvian cooking is stay there because we are going now to our guinea pig okay this is the moment when we are going to go back to our guinea pig while our you know sauce is ending uh to be cooked Okay, with low heat. Muy bien. So, tan, 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 tan. we need, uh, okay, so here we have it. A guinea pig has passed through the process of uh, boiling. We have a guinea pig that has been boiled, but we are going to deep fry it. It is not as hot in this moment, so meaning that we are going to be able to manipulate this guinea pig much better, okay? We're going to sharpen our knife, okay? And we are going to cut the part of the head off. It is soft, very, very soft. Um, I remember people were asking me about why boiling it with the head, you know, if it's going to be too tough. You know, the guinea pig has very, very delicate bones. Also, you know, it's already chopped. Huh? So um, not really discomfortable, discomfortable huh? to, to have it, uh, even with bones completely. Huh? We are going to cook now, frying our guinea pig. So, I think we're going to cut it in four parts. Look at that very, very easy to chop it. Okay, now we have it almost there. We are going also to 
part of this cream blend it okay to make it even more creamier and i will also give it a trial uh, again in terms of the flavor if there's something missing This is going to be the bomb. Ah, okay. So, <laughs> I know, I know, Lord, no worries, no hard feelings. Remember that in Peru, the guinea pigs were domesticated, gracias, Stefan, uh, to be eaten. Uh, it's the same like uh, the chickens, uh, it's the same like the pig. Uh, and also for my friends who just came, uh, I also share in the beginning two pictures. The first one is guinea pig nowadays as you know it, right? And the, uh, let's say the original guinea pig, the one that was domesticated, uh, which is known as Cuy de los Montes, also known as Chinchilla. Okay, so, uh, and, and the chinchilla is much tinier, it's, it's much little, you know, and, and there's not really much, you know, meat in, in that little animal, but that is one of the few animals that live in the mountains, in the Andes, uh, that the indigenous people, my ancestors could eat. So they uh, took those animals, they um, domesticated those animals, and then later, they were able to increase their sizes, you know, and, and making them completely dependent on humans. Oh, and that's how the guinea pigs, look at how fast we cut in pieces, okay? Uh, so that's how the guinea pigs nowadays look like thanks to the domestication. Without the process of domestication for consumption, guinea pigs will not look the same way they look nowadays, okay? So we're going to cut these pieces. So, uh, so we have four pieces, okay? We have four pieces. Thanks a lot to, to the people who were until this moment with me. It really means so much <laughs> to me because I, I knew this, this Hegel academy of today will be you know quite like going to the to the limits uh, for 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 some people like you know out of the comfort zone but that's what we do here on Hegel. we show you different things and different places and different flavors so we're going to just a little bit of the cream let's say like half of the cream we are going to uh, blend it okay so in that way it will have a texture that is going to be a little bit soft. Maybe we're going to add a bit of the broth to make it more liquidy. So it's going to be more soft, more, more creamy, unless, you know, like little, you know, like, um, you know, the feeling of the onion, for example, it's going to be a little bit more creamy, okay? Okay. Yes, yes. Chicha de Jora. Chicha de Jora. Gracias, Evelyn. That's the name of that drink that uh, I put on. Uh, but if someone would like to replicate, for example, this recipe, you can use something different. You can use beer, for example. Right? You can use beer. Uh, you can use a brandy like pisco mm, to enhance the flavor of our dish. Okay, so now we're going to 
move this on one side and we are going to make some room for the deep frying part sorry that i have a tiny kitchen and everything you know is in a little small space but this kitchen is full with love so I, I, I am very happy to, to have you all so many people like 70 people or a little bit more than 70 people today with me oh, i'm going to put this here behind because there's not much space here okay so are you ready for another round of questions amigos are you ready for another round of questions? So please uh, prepare your questions because while we're going to begin Friday, we are going to have some time. It's going to be a, fr a fast Friday. We need a lot of oil for this process. We have four pieces. From one guinea pig, we have four pieces. So maybe we have for two servings. Mm -hmm. We're going to first dry our pan, heat up the pan, and I'm starting to see questions coming up. Lisa, how often do you eat this dish? Is it expensive to buy? Lisa, I don't eat often guinea pig. The reason is because it's expensive in Lima to eat guinea pig. For example, um, let me give you an idea. One kilogram of chicken in Lima, in the uh, market, uh, is about more or less 15 soles. 15 soles, one five. One guinea pig, the one that I had for you today, which is less than one kilogram, it's very tiny, it was 35 soles. 30 five solids three five so that's why guinea pig is something you only eat in a special occasions and what could be more special than this event <laughs> so um that's why well to, to be very honest you know like i wanted to do something super unique for you all um but something i don't even eat much my grandmother she used to love guinea pig and, and even though she loved it, mm, it's a little bit still with water. We don't want, you know, like that, pop, 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 the splashing of the oil with the water. And somehow, oh, my, my cloth that I was using in the kitchen is gone, but it always happens, no worries. You know, we're going to put a lot of oil, okay? This is the part in which, you know, guinea pig is not in the group of the healthiest uh, meats because we are making it unhealthy when we deep fry it, but, you know, it's the way it is. <laughs> so, um, more oil. Yes, of course, more oil. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so I think we have enough of oil. We're going to leave it, you know, to heat up. And we will see our friends here and the questions. So sorry if I miss questions. How does it translate in dollars? Oh, thank you, Marek. Uh, Marek, by the way, is my husband. He's helping me remotely. Uh, he's not in this moment here, but he's helping me with some translations. Do people breed their own eating? Stephanie, in the Andes, yes, of course. Of course, guinea pigs are adapted to live with people in their houses and they usually eat a uh, sort of like for example when we are cutting the vegetables the parts that we are not using in the soup you know they go to the guinea pigs right the, the carrots you know the, the parts that we don't eat they go to the guinea pigs it's not really like leftovers because it's not things we eat uh they are not eating the, the trash you know but they are eating the parts of the vegetables that people don't eat um can you hunt them in the wild no tony because the guinea pigs are 
fully domesticated animals. They don't live, like you can hunt chinchilla if you wish, like the other one I mentioned, the one that was domesticated, but it will not be the same. And I'm sure it's not going to be a very nice meat. Uh-huh. Uh, not soft at least. Mm -hmm. So, a ver. Oh, gracias, Ayuri, querida. Gracias por venir, amiga. <laughs> so, I think you came right on time to see when we fry the guinea pig, okay? So we have our guinea pigs here, you know, and we're going to fry them. Of course, now we have taken off oh, the, the, the parts we don't need. And we're going to gently fry the guinea pig both sides. Look at that. Yes, Marilu, yes. And not just that, I also drink when I am cooking. You know, cheers to you all with Chicha de Hora. Mm. Cheers with the Peruvian beer. Wow, strong beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ay, gracias, amiga. At least in one thing I am organized. Uh, you know, I am multitasking. Sometimes multitasking people, not always the most organized in every aspect. But at least when I cook, I like, I multitask also. So, is there any other question, amigos, you were not able to ask me? Or uh, maybe I, uh, uh, by mistake, I, I was not able to address uh, in the moment, what else do you do in Lima? Lisa, I do a lot of different things. You have to follow my channel, please. I do history talks. I do city tours. I do cooking classes. I do anything. I do uh, uh, cat tours. Uh, I go to parks with you all. So please give me a follow. You're not going to be... Uh, let down with my content in Lima. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh. Oh, it's so soft. Thank you, Sarai. That's my channel. Uh, I also do uh afro peruvian uh, tours or uh, black tours i do oh that's jumping it's jumping careful uh, uh, i do jewish heritage tours of lima i do um well all kinds of history based tools no? so i i love history uh thanks for the follows amigos by the way it means a lot to me and also and once again thanks to alex the person who organized oh it's jumping jumping the oil done <laughs> so thanks to alex he has been such a sweetheart uh he was the person who organized this event this adventure this culinary adventure uh, and and well i i, I felt honored now oh, that he considered me to to do the event for peru also uh, if you can please tell him uh, from my side thank you i have already mentioned personally that but um that i really appreciate what he has done and don't forget to follow him if you don't know what i'm uh who i'm talking about alex is from melbourne in australia he's a wonderful guy i know he's vegetarian so probably he will not be today for that reason <laughs> um but uh send him lots of love from me okay so we're going to see now did the incas eat bugs uh, not maple not the incas but in the jungle of peru just give me a second in the jungle of peru look at my incan cloth this is the one i was you know like <clears throat> look at that i was looking for in the jungle of peru People still eat different type of things that are not um, 
let's say that we will consume regularly. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's like a cookie. Oh. Careful, careful. Okay. Give me a second. It was jumping, jumping, jumping. So this is my guinea pig. I will take my time later to fry the other two pieces because it's jumping too much. But we are going to now present our guinea pig with its plate. And look at this here. Oh, how pretty. This is a Peruvian traditional plate. So we're going to put our guinea pigs now. Thank you so much, by the way, for your contributions to this event. Uh, you have no idea how much you're helping me in supporting the event with a tip. Uh, but not just me as your guide, also Hago, because Hago, as you know, is a free platform that um, you know doesn't charge for for any events. And and while when you are supporting Hago, uh, also like uh, on tours and as well supporting the guys of of Hago, you know, with a tip, you are directly supporting Hago because a percentage of your tip support goes to the platform. So in that way, we can contribute to keeping the platform uh, open, free, you know, like uh, tip supported only. So thanks a lot for that. Thanks for your contributions. And also, if you would like to step uh, go one step forward in, in supporting this channel in particular, please consider becoming a sponsor. Uh, I have lots of things that I create. I created for my sponsors, like two books uh, that are still in process. I do also um, uh, Spanish classes from home for my sponsors. So anyways, if you would like to become a sponsor uh, and you want to know a little bit more about what I do for my sponsors, visit my profile please in in my channel in hago and there you have a description uh muchas gracias thanks evelyn for your support thank you thank you so now we are going oh we need the potato we have to peel it so this one here is boiled potato we don't eat uh raw potatoes in peru <laughs> by the way gracias Sarai, querida. thank you thank you Thank you, my dear. Sarai is sharing my link uh, to, to well, my profile on Hago. Uh, you can also give me a follow if you wish. And there, you know, you will see all my upcoming events. I have events program until uh, May. Yeah. All about history. It's going to be fun. I'd like to make history fun okay we have also the spanish classes so spanish it's something that was given to me because by my mom it is my mother language so i am always happy to share my language with the world oh uh, look at that so we are going to put our cream on top. Dun, dun. This here, so you can see it better. Huh? And in a moment, I'm going to lift the plate higher, okay? Oh, ho, ho. we can also put a little bit here, the guinea pig, and here. Okay, amigos. So here you have, oh, gracias, Lisa. Here you have our, our guinea pig. Ooh, it is coming out. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
Can you please tell me what was added to the sauce at the end? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, we made actually this cream together uh, some time ago, but just let me recapitulate if you were not able to see uh, how I did it. Uh, this was made with onions, uh, cut brunoise. Uh, then we added also a uh, chili. Uh, we, we added this type of chili. Uh, red chili, right? We added also oregano. We added broth of guinea pig, which is the one we have made also during the event. Uh, we added salt. We added peanuts. And we added this chicha de jora. Uh -huh. If you would like to see a replay of this event, I have a YouTube channel. You can visit my YouTube channel on the uh, profile uh, of your guide of Lima in Hago. You just give me a follow. You're going to find there my profile. There you will find a link to my YouTube channel and you will see a replay of this event there. If you wish to see it again, if you were not able to see it in full, I understand sometimes time is complicated. So you can see how everything was made there as many times as you wish if you are planning to cook this dish. Of course, don't get me in troubles, please. If in your country eating guinea pig is not allowed, <laughs> don't get me in troubles. <laughs> Thank you so much, amigas, but we have to we have to eat it. Okay, so I will eat it for you. So let me just show you how it is. Very soft. Oh, it's hot. Oh. In Peru, we, by the way, eat guinea pig with the hand. We don't eat guinea pig with a fork. But of course, we eat it when it's not so hot. Oh. It's hot. Oh, now better. So we're going to put it here. We dip it in the, in the sauce. Mmm. It is really good. Sayuri, you have to come to Peru and I will cook for you this guinea pig, amiga, okay? <laughs> mm. Soft. Delicious. Okay, amigos, let me say bye to you all. Thanks a lot for coming to my show today. Sorry for the noises in the beginning of the event. You know, sometimes you cannot... Mm, sorry, you cannot control what is happening in the streets, but it's been a pleasure to have you here today. Best to you all. <laughs> Best to you all. And have a lovely rest of the day. See you soon, amigos. Gracias. Until and next time. Um, gracias. Gracias. 10 kilos added to, yes, Evelyn, once again, I started, I have to start the diet again. <laughs> Besitos, querida, besitos, gracias. Chao, amigos, chao, chao. See you soon. Bye-bye. Gracias. Hasta pronto.